800 years ago, a group of 20 kings formed a mighty organization known as the World Government. Look at that symbol, pirates. That mark represents the unity of over 170 nations in the Four Seas and the Grand Line. This is the world. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be detailing the absolutely massive governing body of the majority of the One Piece planet, the World Government. The World Government is by far the largest organization within the series, which presents itself as a unifying force of justice and order within the world. It is affiliated with roughly 170 nations spread across the globe, all of whom maintain their own sovereignty, remaining free to rule over their specific lands in more or less any way they choose. However, they must comply with the World Government in the realm of international affairs. As a result, the widespread opinion of the World Government amongst the citizens of the globe is highly favorable, as they are seen as a force of protection and progress. Although the reality of the situation is far more bleak, than this generally accepted view. And this organization could more accurately be described as a totalitarian institute, demanding absolute subservience to the needs and commands of its central figures, and will often engage in incredible efforts to quell any form of power that could be perceived as a potential threat to their own. And this is because the world government exists to ensure more than simply the status quo, and it actively pursues the interests of those who control it, being the world nobles, whose ancestors formed the organization roughly 800 years ago. What would become known as the world government was originally an alliance of 20 kingdoms, which included some well-known names in the One Piece world, such as the Don Quixote and Nefertari families. This alliance was brought forth to combat a currently mysterious entity known as the Ancient Kingdom. And after the founding of the alliance, the royalty of the majority of those 20 kingdoms moved to the holy land of Marijuana, where they became known as the Creators, with their descendants going on to become the world nobles. And it should be noted that only one of the royal families remained in their home country, being the Nefertari family of the Alabaster Kingdom. But this alliance would go on to defeat the Ancient Kingdom, and then assumed control of the large majority of the world, with an incredible number of nations going on to join them throughout the next 800 years as they became the world government. Over this time, the world government would also come to develop two sub-organizations under its command in order to consolidate its power. The first of which is the Marines, who act as the primary military branch and are recognized as one of the most fearsome powers of the world. As such, they are often tapped to further the interests of the world government rather than to simply maintain global order. And they are frequently put to use for morally questionable causes such as, you know, genocide. A good example of which being the O'Hara incident, whereby the world government discovered that its island scholars were conducting illegal research on the ancient kingdom, as well as its remaining legacy in the Poneglyphs scattered throughout the world. And deeming their knowledge too dangerous and a threat to their power, a fleet of 10 marine battleships and five vice admirals, collectively known as a Buster Call, were sent to completely obliterate the island and its inhabitants. And it should be known that this island destroying power represents a mere fraction of the full forces of the marines. However, for more specialist operations, the world government created a second organization known as Cypherpol, which are essentially cells of secret agents that carry out investigations, assassinations, and general odd and specific jobs that require an approach with a bit more finesse. In regards to the agents themselves, the world government generally recruits young children, often through child trafficking, and have them specifically trained in the art of espionage until they become old enough to join one of the generic Cypherpol cells, the secretive Cypherpol 9 cell, or the super duper secret CP0, the latter of which is by far the most powerful unit whom work directly for the world nobles. Speaking of, while the modern day world nobles do benefit heavily from their ancestry, the world government itself is only controlled by a handful of them, known as the Gorose, or the Five Elder Stars. As far as the world is concerned, this group of mysterious gents hold by far the most power and influence of of any other figures in the series. And it is now that I have to put up a brief spoiler warning for the events of the Reverie arc because it's simply impossible to continue without taking note of this one thing. If you don't wish to be spoiled, then please jump to this point in the video. But for the rest of you, let us continue. However, in reality, the Gorosei do answer to at least one person, being the enigmatic figure of Eam. Very little is currently known about this individual, except for the fact that they command complete obedience from the Gorosei, and thus it can be assumed that Eam holds complete control over every facet of the world government organization and operations. Although Eam's existence is kept a secret from the world at large. However, as the acting body of the world government, the Gorosei have the power to enact more or less whatever they want, including a controversial move to begin yet another organization known as the Seven Warlords of the Sea. This is a group of powerful and notorious pirates generally considered to be criminals of the world, but these specific individuals are granted an exemption and are allowed to continue their crimes without fear of retribution from the world government, provided they do not engage in hostilities with the Marines or nations affiliated with the world government. As such, they serve as something of a deterrent for the overwhelming amount of pirates spread throughout the One Piece world, because if one continues 
choose their piratic ways, then they will most certainly run into one of these seven individuals during their journey, which is uh, highly undesirable to say the least. And of course, they also serve a purpose of breaking pirate morale with notions like, well, if even the world's greatest swordsman has joined the world government, then what chance do I stand? However, this group remains largely controversial, particularly amongst the Marines, whose mandate it is to enforce the law. And well, when you have a group that is exempt from the law, it inevitably breeds discontent. In terms of any form of supervision, the seven warlords are directly overseen by the commander in chief, who retains further jurisdiction over the Marines and Cypherpol. Although once again, not CP0, who worked directly for the World Nobles. As for their exact ranking within the organization, the commander in chief is quite absurdly high, sitting just below the Gorosei in terms of power. And at the time of this recording, the current commander in chief is still assumed to be Kong, who once served as the fleet admiral of the Marines. Although the world government does feature further individual associations with figures in the series, with the most notable being Dr. Vegapunk, who was once arrested by the Marines for his notoriously dangerous experiments. However, he now serves as their chief of science, who has furthered the cause of the world government significantly through his exceptional innovations. As for geography, the effective headquarters of the world government is located on Marajoa, and its various organizations are placed strategically around it. For example, the headquarters of the Navy, Marineford, was stationed near the Red Line in Paradise, with two sister institutions nearby, accessible via the Gates of Justice. Those being the underwater prison of Impel Down, as well as the judicial island of Any Slobby, where criminals are taken to be judged before being shipped off to Impel Down. Any Slobby also acts as a station for Cypherpol agents and general employees of the world government, not associated with the Marines. And with this base of operations, the world government has been able to spread their influence throughout the entirety of the four blue seas and even the Grand Lion. In fact, the only location in which the world government does not exert overwhelming influence is in the second half of the Grand Lion, known as the New World. Due to the high danger of these seas, as well as the presence of the four emperors, the New World acts as the final stronghold for those not associated with or actively fighting against the world government. Some more fun facts about the world government. Every four years, the world government holds an event known as the Reverie, whereby a selection of 50 leaders of the 170 nations associated are invited to gather at the Holy Land of Marajoa for a seven day conference in order to discuss events that could come to effect and reshape the world as a result. This event is also sometimes referred to as the Levely, due to that having been the official romanization used in the manga of the Reverie arc. However, I refuse to accept this nonsense. Also of note is that it is not just kingdoms who are affiliated with the world government, but more democratic jurisdictions like the City of Water 7 have also been permitted to join the organization. Even with everything mentioned in this video, I'm not quite sure I've conveyed just how wildly corrupt the world government is, but this should help, as there was once a nation called Flavance, which was known for mining the substance amber lead. Now, roughly a century before their mining industry began, the world government discovered that this substance was highly, highly poisonous. However, they decided to sit on this information in order to directly profit from this temporary industry, which eventually resulted in the entire nation becoming infected with amber lead syndrome and the subsequent genocide of Flavance. Jeez, that's the second time that genocide has come up in this video. Mm. Sensing a pattern here. Although in this case, it should be noted that the people of Flavance were slaughtered by their neighboring countries rather than the world government itself. But as for another example, despite the fact that slavery is publicly outlawed by the world government, exceptions are made for the world nobles in which they serve and thus very little effort is made to shut down the slavery industry. In fact, the world government itself has been known to buy its own slaves and to train them to become Marines or Cypherpol agents, with the most well-known case of this being Mother Carmel, who operated under the alias of Mountain Witch, who even managed to acquire giants and sell them to the world government, with Vice Admiral John Giant serving as a high-ranking individual acquired in this way. And so, as a result of the profound dickishness of the world government, an organization known as the Revolutionary Army has steadily been gaining power and resources and have their sights set on destroying the world government, or more specifically, the world nobles. And finally, a truly useless fact. One particular king who is associated with the world government and who served as the most recent chairman of the reverie is named Hamburger. And now I'm hungry, so we should probably wrap this up. But that pretty much does it for the world government. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece, one one. And now for cooking time with Echiro Oda. And today, we are going to be making our world famous Ballywood hamburgers. And first things first, take your tacos and break them down 
into a fine sprinkle. Next, wash your ramen thoroughly and soak it in a pot of tea. At this point, take 100 milliliters of beer and consume it because you've done some hard work and you've earned it. Back to cooking. It's time to remove our lemon cheese from the fridge and spread it liberally over our taco sprinkles. What should result are the beginnings of a fine samosa, but be careful because at this point, the king of samba may intrude and impede your cooking. To avoid this common problem, simply turn off his music and usher him out of your private residence. And voila, you're left with our world famous Bollywood hamburgers. Enjoy. This has been Cooking Time with Etchira Oda.